पद प्रतिष्ठा सा डिजायर टू फॉर प्रेस्टीज और वेरी बैड इसलिए बड़े प्यार now shri gurudev is continuing with the explanation of shri mana shikshu shri ragunath das goswami according to the bhajan darpan commentary of shri bhakti no thakur now we have arrived at the seventh verse patishta sa drishta sopachar ramani me ridinatat in this verse we find the answer to a question what is the question so far Raghunath Das Goswami Pad has prayed to his mind, "O oh my dear mind, give up lust and sense gratification. Should mm, give up all types of duplicity, and so on." But a question arises: even though a devotee has made a strong attempt to give up offences, to he has conquered sense gratification and so many anarthas, but still kapatata. that means some duplicity remains in his heart haunting his heart why is it he has renounced everything he has overcome many problems but duplicity remains in his heart why is that and that will ruin his bhajan so the answer is given here hmm? that duplicity remains because there is some desire for reputation pratishta asha the desire for name and fame to be honored and respected by others and this is the reason why duplicity will not go away should a good have explained that if someone is doing hari naam sankirtanam they are doing puja and engaged in so many limbs of devotional service but they are not very attentive to overcome this anartha then they will not be able to make progress they cannot progress so shila raghunath das goswami pad bringing our attention to this he said oh we should pray to our mind pray very lovingly oh my dear mind as long as the unprincipled dog eating prostitute of the desire for reputation is dancing within one's heart then how is it possible that one will be touched by pure bhakti why because bhakti devi is very soft hearted very graceful so she will not enter into the heart of a person whose heart is occupied by an unprincipled dog eating prostitute in the form of the desire for reputation so it is not possible for the living entity to evict her from the heart so what should he do he should simply try to become the servant he should render service to those very powerful commanders of the army of sri chaitanya mahaprabhu of sri lalu rupa goswami and by rendering service sincerely without any personal motivation to the powerful vaishnavas then by their blessings that uh, prostitute will be evicted from one's heart and they will bless one with the appearance of immaculate braj prem So in this seventh verse of Shri Mana Shiksha, the subject matter is discussed. Pratishta Asha. What is Pratishta Asha? Asha means the lalasa, the greed, the hankering for what? Pratishta, reputation. So, if a person has conquered all anarthas, but still, by their own efforts. it is impossible to conquer over this anatta impossible this pratishtasha the desire for reputation is compared to chandalini chandalini means a low caste and principled woman who eats the flesh of dogs so the question comes why is shri raghunath das goswami comparing the hankering for reputation to a, a, a dog eating woman chandalini so the answer is that the sadak even though they may be free from all other anarthas they think that they're free from this anartha 
They're very convinced, completely convinced. They'll not admit to anyone or to themselves, they think, I have no desire. I don't want reputation. I don't want to be honored by others. Hmm? They will speak, afterwards they will think, oh, how beautifully I have spoken. And I have spoken in such a wonderful way. Hmm? And some or other, they'll always try to hide their desire for pratishta. Hmm? But if someone will glorify themselves from their own mouth, then it's evidence that this desire must be there. Hmm? A person who has this pratishta asha, they will never ever accept that this fault is there. And they'll try to hide it in so many different ways. So because they do this, hmm, then they're near lajja, that means shameless. So in the same way as a low caste dog-eating prostitute has no shame, similarly, the person who will never admit their hankering for name and fame is completely shameless and therefore Patishtasa has been compared to Chandalini. Also because mundane fame, the taste of mundane fame is being compared to the taste of dog meat. So because they're engaged in tasting this, eating this, they're also Chandalini. Now, this, when, this, when this desire for Pratishta is there, different types of devotees, they manifest different types of duplicity. So that was discussed in the previous verse, and now there's some recap on that subject. The first type of sadhak is the Swanista sadhak. He uh, does not follow any rules and regulations, but he tries to serve God according to his own uh, uh, conception. So that person, he wants to be recognized as being virtuous, benevolent, and free from pap, free from sins. Then, the Pranishtita Sadak, he, he makes an external show of following all rules and regulations, but in his heart, he's actually still attached to so many mundane things. So his idea is, I am a devotee of Bhagavan. I understand things very clearly, and I am disinterested in material enjoyments. But his mind always dwells on those things, so he will not admit it. Then the Nirapeksha Sadak, the first two types of Sadak, Swanista and Parnishtita, they are Grihastas. And the third type of Sadak, Nirapeksha Sadak, he is in the renounced order of life. He thinks, I am a strict renunciate. I have perfectly understood all the conclusions of the Shastra. And my Bhakti has reached the stage of maturity and perfection. In this way, he nourishes his desire for name and fame. So, as long as that desire is present, then duplicity will not go. And as long as duplicity is there, then sadhu prem. Sadhu prem means nirmala prem. Pure love will not come. So, someone may think, I have become perfect, I have attained pure love. That's easy to think. But actually, what is sadhu prem? What is pure love? Srila Rupa Goswami Padas explains the unalloyed, unalloyed love in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 141. There he said, Samyam 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 Budai Premeni Gadyate. It means that those who are learned in Bhakti Tattva, such as Rupa Goswami himself, and all of our acharyas. They have concluded that when a person has come through the stages, nishta, ruchi, asakti, rati, and entered into the stage of bhav, and his heart is melting hmm, by the influence of shuddha sattva visheshatma, the transcendental emotions of the eternal associates of Radha and Krishna. Now he's in the stage of bhav, but this should progress even more. His heart was melting somewhat, but Samya Masrinita Swanto, when his heart is totally melted, completely melted, hmm? that means that all the sattvic bhavs are manifesting hmm? and strong desires for intimate service of his Ishtadev. At that time, the devotee experiences the Sangra Atma, hmm? very, very intense bliss, <coughs> and Mamata Tishayankita the appearance of excessive, condensed mamata, or possessiveness, for his Ishtadev. This stage 
is called Prem, and that is what has been described here as Sadhu Prem or Nirmala Prem, pure transcendental love. Now, Srila Bhaktino Thakur in his commentary is giving examples from the Shastra to, to show that Pratishta, the desire for reputation, is such a formidable enemy. It is so terrible that it is impossible to overcome without the mercy of Vaishnavas. Only one, by one sadhan, he cannot attain it. It's not possible. By practicing sadhana bhakti under the guidance of Sadguru and Vaishnava, one may attain bhav. But to go from bhav to prem, this pure prem, sadhan is not the process. Prem is only attained by the mercy of Krishna and the mercy of his associates. But the mercy of Krishna and his eternal associates is completely subordinate to the mercy of the Vaishnavas, pure devotees. And therefore, it's stated in Vishnu Puran, Aradhana nam savesham Vishnu aradhanam param tasmat paratamam devi tidyanam samachanam See, Mahadev Sankarji is explaining to poverty. Aradhananam sarvesham. Out of all the types of service, all types of aradhana, worship, the best of all is Vishnu Aradhanam Param, the worship of Vishnu. What does Vishnu mean here? Hmm? As stated by Shukadev Goswami Pad in Srimad Bhagavatam, Vikriditam Badubir Idangcha Vishnu. That Vishnu who is dancing in Rasalila with the gopis of Vrindavan, oh, that is Krishna. He is Radha Kanta, Radha Rasabihari. The worship of that Vishnu is the highest of all. Yet still, Tasmat Parataram Devi, or Devi superior to this, what? Tadiyanam Samachanam. The worship of his Tadiya, Tadiya Vastu. Those who belong to him, his own, his nearest and dearest. Shimati Radhika and her maidservants. And especially in this world for the sadhak, the pure devotees. So, out of all the pure devotees who are supermost, the, so the categories of devotees can be um, understood in terms of their Ishta Dev. Who is their Aradya Dev? So, if a devotee is Aradya Devi, Ishimati Radhika, Krishna's Parashakti, then they are the highest class of devotees. So without the mercy of those who are fully dedicated to the service of the Lotus Feet of Shimati Radhika and realized on the transcendental platform, then it is not possible to attain the mercy of Sri Krishna for, to attain this goal, the goal explained in Shimana Shiksha. So now Srila Bhakti Thakur is giving evidence from Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 3, Chapter 7, Text 19. There it is stated, Yat Sevaya Bhagavata Kutas Tassa Madhudisha Ratira So Bhavet Tira Padio Vyasanardana Yat Sevaya Padio Vyasanardana So Yat Sevaya Bhagavata By serving the Maha Bhagavat devotees What benefit is accrued? Kutastasa Madhudisha. One will attain a rati. Rati Raso Bhavettiva. Very intense rati for the lotus feet of Kutasta. The Supreme Lord who is Kutasta. Kutasta, general meaning means fixed, unchangeable. But special, special meaning of Kutasta means who is situated on Kut. Kut means the tip of a mountain. So that means that Krishna who plays upon the Top of Giraj Govardhan, hmm? or also confidential meaning, who plays upon the heart of Radhika. So for that Krishna, Rati Raso, one will attain Rati. Not only that, Rati Raso means one will have the opportunity to enter into the Ras Lila of that Kutasta Krishna, that Krishna who plays his sweet pastimes at Giraj Govardhan. So, in other words. By serving pure devotees, especially by listening to their Harikatha, 
Hearing Krishna Leela from the lips of pure devotees has such intense potency that it will drive away all Durvasana, all wicked desires, all attachment, all lust, which is the mool or the root of our material existence. Therefore it is stated, Bhakti Param Bhagavati Pratilabhya Kama Ridrogam Asya Pahino Chachirena Dhiraha Those who they hear very carefully and continuously with unflinching faith to the descriptions of Krishna's pastimes from the lips of pure devotees, what will happen? First Bhakti will come, Bhakti will appear in their heart and along with the appearance of Bhakti uh, the appearance of that bhakti will drive away, completely wash away, withdraw the disease of the heart, calm. Patilabja karma means that devotee will attain karma rupa bhakti. In other words, devotional service in Madhurya Rasa. And then, tadiyanam samachanam, they'll attain the service of Krishna's tadiyavastu, that means the eternal service of the lotus feet of Shrimati Radhika. Srila Bhakti Notakur is continuing with his elaboration on the power of Vaishnava Seva. In Sri Chaitanya Chattamrita, there it is stated, Bhakta Pada Duliyar Bhakta Pada Jal Bhakta Bhakta Avesha Shatin Mahabhav It means that directly all the scriptures have clearly stated that the remnants from the lips of a pure devotee, the remnants of his Mahaprasadam, the water which has bathed his feet, his Harikata, and the dust of his lotus feet, they are so powerful they can give praying. Why? Because the rays of Ladini Shakti emanate from the pure devotee. And the foot dust, the Mahaprasadam, the Harikata, and the Chanamrita of the pure devotee are competent to transmit the rays of Ladini Shakti from the heart of the pure devotee into the heart of the Sadak. You are part of this Now, Srila Rupa Goswami Pad, Srila Bhakti Nautaka was giving another example from Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. There is stated, Yavanti Bhagavat Bhakti Angani Katitaniha Prayastavanti Tad Bhakta Bhakti Api Buddha Vidhu. It means that after describing the 64 angas of bhakti, Srila Rupa Goswami Pad concludes that most of these 64 limbs of devotional service can be practiced in relationship to the pure devotee. Mm -hmm. So that devotee should be tattvavit, expert in all tattva siddhanta and rupanuga and rasik. Then Srila Bhakti Nautakur is giving another example from Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Digambo bedauta pulaka patali manditha tanum. In this verse it's stated, one person is uh, expressing their own experience. One day I was walking and a person they just walked onto the path of my vision. How was that person? Tears were flowing from his eyes. His, his body was drenched in his own tears. His voice was choked with emotion. The, the hairs of his body were standing on end and he was staggering in ecstatic love for Sri Krishna. And only by seeing him, I don't know why, but now I've lost all interest in my household life and in pursuing ambitions in this material world. So, this verse gives an example of the power of Sadhu Sangha. Simply by very small amount of association, Bhav was awakened in the heart of this person. Because the symptom of the appearance of Bhav is detachment from this world, natural detachment. So, in Jaiva Dharma, in the beginning of Jaiva Dharma, there's another example, very similar to this. There was one sannyasi. He was very learned in all the Shastras. And he was a great philosopher, but he was an impersonalist. He was constantly meditating on the statements of Shastra, which have been called Mahavakya by Sri Pad Shankaracharya, Aham Brahmasmi, Pragyanam Brahma, Salam Kavadam Brahma. And he was meditating on these things. But one day, a sadhu just walked past, 
He was weeping, he was trembling, and in great love he was calling out, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Shiva Sadi, Gaur Bhakta Brinda. And then he, that sadhu disappeared. Hmm? So then that sannyasi, what happened? His mind was absorbed in Brahman, but all of a sudden he lost interest in, in Brahman. And his heart became agitated. He was very eager to find out that sadhu, but he had already gone. So he, he was very restless to find him, so he began to search. First he went to Vrindavan, but he could not find him there. And then he came to Navadvip Dham. And there he met with Prem Das Babaji. He told him, I was absorbed in remembering Tat Thomasi. I am that, Nirvishesh Brahman. Hmm? But then, I saw this sadhu, and my heart became restless, and I lost all interest in Nirvishesh Brahman. He expressed his experiences. So this is the power of sadhu sangha. Srila Gurudev gave another example, like Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. He went to the West, and many persons, having no knowledge of devotion, only by seeing him for a moment, they became captive, completely captured, and they gave their life to his service. Therefore, such Vaishnavas are called Atulaniya Senapati, the incomparable generals in the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Who are they? Like Roy Ramananda, Srop Damodar Goswami, Srila Rupa Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami, and our Guru Varga. No one can become free from the Anatta of Pratishta, but if they will remember, and they will pray, and they will serve, such great generals in the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then very soon, by their mercy only, all their anathas will be gone, the last anatha, Pratishta, will also be gone, and then their heart will be inundated with the Immaculate Braja Prem. Gaur Premanande. When I was a student, at that time, I was fortunate to see I was returning from school and I saw same person like he was rolling on the ground, weeping bitterly and chanting Hare Krishna Nam, I don't remember or Sri Krishna Chaitanya. At that time could not think that who is he, but now I think that it must be connected with Gauriya Vaishnava. Otherwise this cannot be happened. So I am also some fortunate to be, to see a person like this. Now, tomorrow, after Harikatha, at 10, Mahaprasad will be ready. And it will be said to you. Buses will be there. So within 12, you should finish your prasad seva here. And with luggages all, you should come to buses. And then ready to go to Paitha, Chandra Sarovar, and then Govardhan. Uh, you must reach before 5 or 4 because you will have to give places to live. So there is some so much things to do. So you should announce also.
Así que ya para el regreso, este tipo de